Alright, um... Should we bother reading the terms and conditions? No. Okay. Who cares about terms and conditions? They might take our soul, but whatever, yeah. it's fine. Okay, so let's do new game. Welcome to your dream vacation. Before we get started, what should we call you? Oh, we gotta come up with a stupid name. We could be Spongebob. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Spongebob. Oh! Oh! Oh no! Spongebob! Spongebob! <laughs> well, Spongebob is good enough. Yeah, it won't let me- it won't let me, um, backspace. Okay, so I guess we're Spongebob. <coughs> I don't know what kind of voice to do for him. You wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging the inside of your throat as if you'd nearly drowned. Probably. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. He was Bikini Bottom. <laughs> this is what happens when he gets out of Bikini Bottom. Yeah. He dates killers. <laughs> <laughs> what you do know is that, despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. <laughs> oh, okay, that went by really fast. Yeah. Wow, really went down the the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute, or can I go on? Well, okay, why is it doing that? I don't yeah, like that. why SpongeBob's really fast? Let me try the controller. Because I can give you a minute. We've plenty of time. Oh, we've got plenty of time. Endless time, really. An eternity, if you catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, SpongeBob. May I continue? Okay, so... The ocean and whatever, two different things. Please, go on. Okay, then. As I was... <coughs> dot, dot, dot. As I was saying... You look down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Oh. Gross. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit. A stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other... Ick. Can Spongebob even vomit? He's a sponge. Yeah, I think he would just absorb it all. Yeah, yeah I guess we're absorbing this vomit back into us. Ew. He <laughs> gets grosser. <laughs> Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Run, close your eyes, or dig up that face. We gotta dig up that face. <laughs> Their friend now. You brush the sand away from the half-buried human head embedded in the ground before you. Oh, ew. Why did we open the mouth up? We didn't get asked to do that. There is no body, just this head. As you pick it up, flakes of skin fall to the ground. The jaw falls open, revealing a gold coin sitting on the rotting tongue of this poor dead soul. Okay. Getting your hands dirty, I see. I like that. You're a take charge type. Is the coin going to start talking to us? You examine the gold coin briefly, happily distracted from what has otherwise been an extremely confusing morning. The sun beats down on you, drying your clothes. You check your pockets, but they're empty. Plenty of room for a gold coin, you suppose, and so you deposit it. Why, that's a nice coin you've got there. What if you were to spend it right now? Um, what are we spending it on? <laughs> I don't. Maybe we're gonna go to this little, uh, this little like beach restaurant over here. Uh, yeah, on our Krabby Patty. <laughs> uh, well, then we gotta spend it. Like why that. not? Well, hello there. I'm Dwight, and I'm Claudette. We'll take that. Why do they look like Pokemon trainers? They do look like Pokemon <laughs> trainers. 
Claudette quickly relieves you of your gold, gold coin and tosses it to Dwight, who bites down on it like an old-timey prospector before handing it back to her. And this... It's for you! Okay. Claudette presents you with a tropical drink. When you take a sip, you find that it's incredible. Money well spent in your estimation. They technically just robbed us. They did. And now they're giving us some very sketchy uh, drink. But I gotta ask, could somebody maybe design the next one of these dating sims to be all-inclusive? It really takes some of the fun out of a fantasy vacation to be watching your wallet the entire time. Thank them for the delicious drink, or yeah, spit it out. Yeah, we gotta thank them. We thank them. It's delicious. Thanks for the drink. It's quite delicious. You're welcome! Someone just thank us? Go with it, Dwight. It's normal to be thanked for doing a good job. Trust me on this one. <laughs> your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Is it another head? Oh, no! Oh! Volleyball time! When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. I knew there would be volleyballs at some point. <laughs> You stare down frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Do you think it's going to be a killer or a survivor? Um, I'm going to guess survivor. Oh, it's the Huntress! Oh. Do you want to be her? Yeah, I'll be her. Little help, please? <laughs> you turn around, and when you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. Oh, man, that voice totally fits her. <laughs> Oh. Okay, I like that one. That That's the one we're yeah. going to go for. Yeah, definitely. This guy looks like he's from Resident Evil 5. He does. <laughs> Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Why are you calling them monsters? That's rude. That beautiful. They all look like people. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura of reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Thank you for... <laughs> your heart begins to race. Curiosity. Fear. Desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed... Let's call them killers. I don't know, not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. Hello? <laughs> there are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy-ass monsters, though. Okay. What do you do? Toss it back, kick it back, say no thanks, say nothing, do nothing. Um, what do you think they'll like? Let's let's toss it back. Maybe we'll start playing with them. Okay. You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in the huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Huntress's muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand. You look her up and down and consider what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty, but that's okay. It's natural. You can always jump in the ocean. Try hard much? Blech. They're speaking directly to you, but you can't, still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone to back to the volleyball court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. How do you know it's their private beach? Yeah. What if we're in, like, Santa Barbara or something? Should you be frightened? Worried? Excited? I did refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, Damn, they are looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, SpongeBob. You were made for this. 
Well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. Okay. It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit? <laughs> and I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best to just go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean you're here to do more than distract from my total domination? That was Wraith. That sigh means he was done with the game too. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Yes, I too make weird sounds when I see butterflies. Yes. Look, I don't care why this slot John Moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? No, you can't. At least, not yet. I'm feeling very threatened right now. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, Spongebob, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. But be warned, answer quickly and answer well. Uh-oh, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, God. This is- Oh, God! Oh, no! This is a timed oh, quiz, no. and it will be very important yeah. later. <laughs> very important. Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. This voice talks like the way Thomas talks. I swear to God. I bet he wrote this oh dialogue. God. How attractive would you say you are? Uh, very, obviously. Power. I'd say I'm very attractive. That's why you think... That's what you think very attractive is compared to this? Trapper flexes it. His muscles are so tight that you can practically see the blood running through his veins. Gross. You could have any superpower. What would it be? Invisibility, flight, or super strength. Um, let's be invisible. Get away from this. Um, invisibility? Same, although sometimes I think I already am. What was your best subject in school? Oh god, I wasn't good at either of those. You know the Spongebob lore better than me, what's his best? God, um... I'm gonna say history. Okay. I, I think Spongebob's too good of a, of a good pupil to skip class. History? <laughs> Nice. It's important to know what came before so that we're not doomed to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways, but still. Okay. What's your favorite animal? Uh-oh. What is a mu- what is that? I don't know, but we gotta choose it now. <laughs> Mustelids, 100%. Be honest? <laughs> <laughs> Be honest, you have no idea what a mustel it is, and you're just hoping it's some secret answer that will result in a hilarious Easter egg, right? Shit, they they found us out, man. Yeah, what if we die? <laughs> it's just like for us. Because there is no Easter egg. It's just another word for ferrets and stuff like that. Oh, okay. okay, that's fine. I like ferrets too. What's your favorite color? What are we in elementary school? <laughs> Blue, blood red, or three-tailed corpse? <laughs> the third one is the funniest, but I don't think Spongebob would say it. Uh, let's go with blue. Yeah. Because that's the color of the ocean. Yeah. Blue? Blue isn't good for productivity. It makes people want to be lazy. What's your dream job? Astronaut, nightclub promoter, not working at all. I'm gonna I... go with astronaut. Yeah. It'd be pretty amazing to be an astronaut, I think. 
It's hard to imagine being farther away from anyone than floating in space, the cold, inky vastness of nothing forever. Okay. Best flavor of ice cream? Vanilla, chocolate, or horse flesh? I mean, horse flesh is, uh, like, isn't that like, I don't know, the, uh, gelatin? <laughs> horse flesh? Horse flesh? I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> My favorite flavor is pain! Does he mean, like, a Carolina Reaper flavor? I guess. Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla, swirled with pain. Oh, okay. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor I've ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream, am I right? Hold on a second, this reminds me. I am right, always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator. You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even for faceless voices. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Um, I assume mint chip. I guess I, I I don't think we have a choice. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. We're gonna die from this. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Ray. Oh, that's fucked up. That's rude. Uh, hi, I'm Ray. I'm nothing like everyone else. <laughs> I'm... What was that? I'm a- I'm a gamer girl. I'm not like the other girls. Yes. I like nice people and loathe big eye, big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based Sounds on like my- a, she's gonna be at Tsundere. Right? <laughs> Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering, and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. I'll shed a girl after my own heart. Jeez, it's like she was downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh, no, wait. I'm remembering Spirit's story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. <laughs> Hey, I'm a huntress. Don't let those bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Ah, oh, there is, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, Trapper. Grow up. Oh, body. Oh. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. Damn. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Why do I get hey, the I feeling they... Something? I don't know, I'm like, why do I get the feeling they, like, hooked up in the past or something? Get that vibe, too. <laughs> Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it! Ugh. Don't speak for me, I also hate it. What? Okay. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Wraith. Wait, no, but spir that was spirit. That was spirit! Let's move on, otherwise we'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. We're done playing. Let's do something else instead. Wow, for once I actually agree with this meathead. I say, 
we go to my yacht, it's the massive boat dock nearby. So, would you go to a yacht with, like, four self-proclaimed killers? No, that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him, he just hates fun and happiness. Does he? No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth, the way it flaunted needlessly, and the cruelty it engenders. What about hanging out by the pool? You see how happy he looks now? Yeah. I find the water calming, simple, beautiful. Okay, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out. I'll chill out at right here. I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. Shit, me too! Yep, see? Yeah. That, that's my girl right there. Yeah. Where do you want to go? We're tired, obviously. Okay, so that way... Okay, so volleyball... Volleyball game... Is this, is this a yacht? I think it might th be the yacht. Okay, and then... What was the other one? He said pool? Pool. Is that yeah. the pool? But that looks like the ocean. I think the one on the far left is the pool. Maybe. Don't know. <sighs> I'm so confused. Okay, um... Why don't they have words on them? I don't know. I'm like, no, I, I, I want to go with, with her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I pool. Feel like just lounging around is the second one, maybe? But she said she hates the sun, and that's a lot of sun. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go with this one, then. Okay. God, let's see what happens. Ah, we got it right! Yeah. It'd be great to relax for a second at the lounge. To kick up your feet, look out over the ocean, and relax on your own terms. Who would want anything else? Try, comfortable, enjoying a cool drink on a hot day. It's the best. I mean, what kind of fool, what kind of monster, what kind of mask-wearing psychopath would finally be granted a break from the constant grind of chasing and fighting to get ahead and then choose to exert themselves in, quite frankly, any way whatsoever? I mean, she's got a point. She does. <laughs> Why am I the only one who gets it? It's time to stop living by their rules. I won't do it any longer. Calm down. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we should probably give her a second to calm down. Hold on. For just one moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. Do you mean counselors? God, why do they look like Pokemon trainers? They do. <laughs> They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janders, and every other job. I guess it's better than running, running away from... Serial killers forever. Hmm. Finally, they're the ones in power. They're the only help remaining on the island. Uh-oh. What happened to the others? They got killed. This place we call Murderer's Island. <laughs> Cue dramatic musical flourish. That wasn't... Okay. None of the others survived... <clears throat> survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall heretofore refer to them as survivors with the capital S. These two have worked here a long time. So very long. I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry. Anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that's starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present you with your options whenever possible, and don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. Most you could do is help us get off the island. Dwight! Yes, pardon me. Please 
follow us? Hey, narrator? Yes, something I can help you with? Those two, Claudette and Dwight, did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape? Them? Oh, no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. It seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that. Yes, that's true, he was, but he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway, a couple miles south of here. It has much fancier accommodations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decision matter. Oh, your decisions matter mostly when I agree with them. Not like that other island. So what'll it be? We just over to shoot. Now, uh, let's go back to the lounge. <laughs> Finally, freedom from the preposterous premise that the four of us will be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. Spirit looks at you from beneath her gigantic sun hat. She takes a conspiratorial tone. I don't know whose idea volleyball was in the first place, but I hate them. I tried to feign a sprained ankle, but everybody already knows I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting any pressure on my joints in the first place. Then I tried to annoy everyone by not giving a crap, and when that didn't work, I tried whining, and when that didn't work, I threatened to kill every single person on this island. But... It turns out I'm not the first to toss those kind of threats around on this island. So, thanks, I guess, for getting it called off. Are we threatening to end each other again? <laughs> now it's Dwight who takes on a conspiratorial tone, his eyes shifting as he slips into a loud whisper. Please, just make it quick. Dot, dot, dot. Is what you'll be saying when we get behind the bar to make you the drink of your dreams. <laughs> dot dot dot. Uh, <laughs> hilarious, right? Right, Dwight? Yeah, alright, right, right. So what will you be having? Uh, what? vodka soda, sangria, son whatever, scotch rocks, virgin dihiri. I don't know any of these. <laughs> Well, this one says virgin, so that means it's it's non-alcoholic, so we'll go with that. Okay. Yeah. Us and Spongebob are like, you know what? Don't give us any of that Satan's nectar. I didn't come here to party. I'm just trying to make the best of a very strange situation. I don't know. How about a daiquiri? You know how to make that? But skip the liquor. I'll have mine virgin. Trapper snickers at your choice of words. <laughs> sure you will, kid. Don't mind him. We don't need to soak ourselves in booze to just to please someone else's expectations. If you ask me, there's enough spirits here already. Shit, she's my favorite. God damn. She is. She's she's the waifu. Besides, alcohol just numbs you to the painful realities of the world. I choose to f I choose to face them head on. Bro! Bro! Man! I'm just like, I, I, I want to protect her now. I know she'd probably kill me, but... You'd never do something like, I don't know, hide from it all behind the world's largest hat or something. Please allow me to ignore any fashion advice uh, from a... Okay, hold on. Please allow me to ignore any fashion advice from the man wearing a doll's face as a mask. Okay. That must have been a big doll. Not a doll's face, jerk. What is it then? <laughs> oh, since we've fulfilled your requests. It's time for you to return the favor. I should have known there was a catch. Icebreaker time! I swear, had I known they'd pull this kind of faux-enthusiastic community-building crap, I'd have suggest 
Whoops, I fucked up. I swear, had I known they'd pull this kind of faux enthusiastic community building crap, I'd have suggested we attempt to walk to the lowest point of the ocean before I ever set foot near this bar. Ah, uh, you don't think it could be kind of fun? A little fun? Never mind. I hate it. This sucks. But it could be fine. Or whatever you say. Has anyone seen my hat? What are we doing, Wraith? Or, I didn't... Uh, I don't know Do what we're doing. Hat? I've literally never seen him in a hat. <laughs> if we make small talk, I'm at least picking a topic before we end up being forced to do s some lame improv game that nerds learn at their non-sports after-school activities that I definitely never did because I'm no nerd. I don't know. Sounds kind of defensive. Like mm-hmm. Me thinks a certain someone doth protest too much. Doth, doth, whatever. Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog beneath my severed feet. Oh, yeah, she does have severed feet. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. The topic I choose is books. Novels, comics, fiction, or non. Reading is the only real escape from the inescapable horror of life. The escape into your own mind. Man. Man. I love her. Yeah. A groan rolls through the crowd. Not a lot of readers here, I'd imagine, based on that response. They were very they were much more enthusiastic about drinking, and that's why we're not choosing anyone else. Mm -hmm. Considering the situation we're in, it seems an appropriate time to ask you. Spongebo, what's your desert island book? The one book you'd bring with you if you were, well, on an island like this. Oh, and it has to be classic horror. For reasons that should be obvious. She means because this is an island of horror villains, and also those books are all in the public domain. Nothing too modern. Humanity really has gotten soft these past hundred years. So what's your favorite? Dracula, Frankenstein, jo Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde. Okay. What would she like? Because the fourth one, we're pretty sure she wouldn't like. Yeah. She'd like both. Yep. Um. Let's see. Dracula. He lives in he lives in a castle and he sucks blood because he's a womanizer. Frankenstein, the monster, was created against his will and basically abused by his creator. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, dudes bipolar. Yeah, is she more bipolar or someone created against her will? Or I she like I, castles? I'm gonna say Frankenstein, because remember society, well, like, the, the villagers, like, went after the monster? Yeah. It's misunderstood. So, yeah, let's go with that. I didn't- what? I didn't actually read it, but I've seen, like, three movie versions of Frankenstein. They've all be pretty good. Bro. You know, you can lie to make yourself smarter. They're killers, not mind readers. I wanted to say we read- No, I don't care about you! Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Seeking knowledge, but finding only death? Yeah, been there. I don't care about your opinion. I can't say that my experiments have been as successful, but well, fingers crossed. Fire, don't even get me started. Experiments? Experiment. Oh, oh <laughs> Crap. Not again, I swear! Every excuse you give him, it's this talk about! <gasps> shut up! <sighs> Did you tell me to shut up? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Take it from me, this one likes to think he's the scientist, but he's actually the monster. So we should feel bad for him? Can't I be a little of both? Like I said, I haven't actually read it, but that sounds smart enough that I'd be willing to believe it's the true meaning of the story. No. <clears throat> enough of this. Oh, enough of these old stories that belong to someone else. I think it's time to make up some new stories of our own. Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air, a devilish twinkle in her half-mask-covered eye. Might have suggest something a little naughty. Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Is she talking about the axe? Is this spin the axe? It's spin the axe. 
Oh. What is this? Great idea. Trickster? Isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who gets to make the rules, so I'm not sure who I'm asking. I think he's... I think he's a new killer that's like from a boy band or something like that. That's I, so I, funny. I can't remember. I like he seems vaguely familiar, and yeah. Anyway, I, I could just be making all this up, though. He's a boy band now. <laughs> but I wasn't ready for this. Well, hello. And who is this new fan in the waiting? Sounds like a boy band, dude. Does. <laughs> I don't know. What's the harm in inviting one more person to join our join the circle for our game? We only have two women here. No. Oh, I can't stay. I was just saying it's a great idea while also teasing the secret trickster ending. I've got much, much better things to do than hang out. I'm famous. Toodaloo. <laughs> okay. Hi. The rules are simple. First you swim. Spin, then you swap spit, that is. Ew. But let's be clear, this ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye. Real romantic, like. Yes, romance is the goal. So we'll all be waiting here in complete silence, trying to listen in and use our imaginations while you make out on the other side of the bar. But not watching. Ugh. Like adults. Romantic, well-adjusted adults. Spongebo, you're up! You grip the bottle in your hand and put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Oh god. Many games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. This here upcoming minigame is a special minigame, perfect for the less coordinated, because there is no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. So if we don't get who we want, that's basically losing. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that's a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. Uh. Okay, ready to play, or would you like me to repeat that? We're, we're ready. Ready? I'm ready! Oh god, kill me. Okay. Away we go. Spin the bottle and see who you're gonna smooch. I'm scared. I I want to get her. Oh god. Oh. No! No! You got trapper. You two are meant to be. No, we're not. Psych! You actually have to spin multiple times to get your real result. First, to get... Three times is your true match. That's how we play hardcore spin the bottle on this here island. Okay. Oh god. No! No! <gasps> okay. One. No! no! Son of a bitch! I don't know! I don't want him! Just this morning you were waking up on a strange beach surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. Now you're looking across a beach shell at Trapper, lust in his eyes and sweat glistening on his skin. No. No. Your heart races, you can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Trapper takes you by the hand and you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. He begins to reach for you, putting his hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but not in the sexy way he is. You're sweating in the gross way. You'd sweat at the interview for a job you're not even remotely qualified for. You don't know what to do. If you try and lock lips in this state, you might gross him out so complete, so completely that he'll never be able to look at you romantically again. I'm fine with that. Trapper, Trapper, I, you, we... David, it's not happening. Oh, thank God. Dot, dot, dot. Don't cry. I know to get clo this close to a living god and then feel the sting of his rejection, it might hurt bad. But don't take it personally. Well, do, but use it to make yourself stronger. It's not because I don't want to. It's because you haven't earned it yet. You might later. For now, I can't. It can't be that easy. Sure, maybe with one of the others, they're weak, sad, lonely. Not me. I don't need this. It's mine to give or to withhold. 
You really dodged a bullet. This means you'll have a chance to present yourself in a bit more flattering of a light later. I'll assuming you survive. I'm, I'm not going for him. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I think you're cute. I would make out with you so hard, your heart would cave in if I wanted to. And I do, but I still won't. I think he's the Sundere. Yeah. Tell anyone I told you this and you die, they die, and then I have to all, all revive and kill you all again. Anyone asks, I was the best you ever had, which I might just be another time. Does he mean another playthrough? Yes. I hate to break up such a passionate moment. That we only assume was passionate because we'd never spy on you constantly while you stay on this island. The dinner is being served right away and we must insist that you join us. We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation. And there are so many more interesting things to die from. Thanks, Joy. <laughs> Seems like the next activity is mealtime? How quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall at the huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you'd find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And oh great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. Oh boy, here we go. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. That's Valid. fine, we don't either. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Oh, he's back. Oh yeah, Trickster is here. Surprised? Yeah, well, they don't call him expected sir. I'm sorry, even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole shtick gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good, Spongebob. Real good. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin to dinner. I'm we trying to math out who was sitting by who. I'm just like, wait, know. I'm like, wait, we didn't get a chance to, to sit or choose our seats. Yeah. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite! Meat is good. <laughs> meat is murder. Oh god, he's one of them vegans. Which you'd know considering what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts and you need to murder something to eat. It's meat, so that's like technically true. Well, you shouldn't have a problem with that because you're a killer. Yeah. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Spongebob, you think of what I'm thinking? Not really. It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? I actually wasn't thinking that. <laughs> or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know? Oh. When you look closely at that spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. Okay, so it is human. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? 
This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meat meal. Wow, he's right for a change, because I am, with my broad axe, it's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all just completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. <sighs> you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obs. The heck it is! Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop. Please, I hate when we fight, or talk, or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azrov. Great, instead of slicing it up, you can club it to second death. Hey, Spongebob, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I mean, dinner. Who is Felix? Wait, is he a survivor? Maybe he's a survivor. I don't remember. I only play as, like, two characters. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. Goddamn. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value of maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always, <laughs> always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. Here's a machete. Freshly sharpened. Oh, God. We already know this. Yeah, okay, we... Yes, thank you, we know. No, do not. How do I... Okay. <laughs> Ready, away we go. Slice. Oh. Did I... Oh! I was trying to press the... Did I win? Not bad. Oh, am I supposed to get on the meat icon? Did I win? Oh, God. I don't know if I'm supposed to get on the meat icon or just... Yeah. No! That was pretty good. I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. At least she's happy with us. Mm -hmm. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds, especially coming from the mask killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean... Come on. We're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mysterious comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who have been working their butts off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% disgusting. As disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Well, at least Spirit didn't... Spirit's not being gross. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. What's the other? That's yeah. only one thing. Think about it, SpongeBob. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. She has a point. Nice. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what it would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is that they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I don't know if Spirit would care, but whatever. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? Look at that seagull, obviously. You look at that seagull, obviously. <laughs> 
Wow, you ever see a seagull that big? I haven't. That's incredible. Anyway, what were we talking about? Lame misdirect. Oh. Yeah, she's right, Spongebo. Pretty lame. Own who you are. Never compromise. Didn't you, didn't you wash up on the island with no memory of who you are and how you got here? Yes, you did. Poor thing. You have no idea the last time you ate a real meal and you've been standing in the sun. But the seagull... Uh-oh, he just made a lot of good points. I swear. You're beginning to feel lightheaded. It waved at me. Maybe you need to eat to survive here. Either that or someone poisoned you. No, wait, you haven't eaten, so you can't be poisoned. Hmm. But you drank a bunch of drinks. You could still be poisoned. Oh, yep, Claudette and Dwight. We've drunk Dwight. We've drank twice here. That's true. Whatever the answer, you're clearly, clearly about to pass out. Oh, hey, it's me again. The friend, mentor, and guide, narrator to the narrator of the ocean. Not sure I, how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who could help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. Obviously, we're here to romance one of these killers and live happily ever after forever Maybe killing- Maybe we're one of the killers. <gasps> you're right. I don't know. Yeah. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Oh boy. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were. Am I right? <laughs> yep. This place holds many secrets. Even more, even from self. But the only one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague. Mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. In your best interest to make more choices than I like. Some of the choices might be yours to make. They're mine to reward. Okay. You wake up to find spirit, yes, holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. Sexy. Don't you just love the ocean at night? I do. Staring out over the vast darkness of the ocean really validates the feelings inside of me that we're all truly insignificant and the only worth pursuing is revenge. I have to wonder, how could anyone believe anything else? You look out into the darkness of night and ponder her question. Well, it's a simple question. How could they? How could anyone not feel small and alone in the face of such massive nothingness? You've always been alone. You found someone special. Hmm. Uh, I, did, I feel like you found someone special might be like, let's commit to her route, but like, you've always been alone. Maybe... I don't know which one will make her unhappy. Yeah, I'm like, does, like... Uh, I'm like, is she asking about our past? Because if, if she's asking about the past, she'd be happy to hear... That we said we've been alone. Found someone special. Um. <sighs> okay, let's go with you've always been alone. Maybe it's spirit's words. Maybe it's the ocean. Or maybe it has always been this way. But you suddenly feel connected to spirit's words. Okay, looks like that was okay. the right choice. I may not remember much about my life before, but there's one thing I know to be true. I've always been alone. And I always will be alone. Spirit has turned from looking at the ocean and is looking directly at you now. It's a funny idea, isn't it? Being alone? Together? Yes. It's the best we can hope for. Oh, good. Maybe. 
Or maybe it's too much to hope for. Maybe it's impossible to pretend we know anything. Is that just arrogance? Ugh, I was so dumb. So busy trying to please everyone and be the perfect student, the perfect employee, the perfect daughter. I didn't take care of myself. And now I'm all I've got. Worst of all, I got distracted from my true purpose. My destiny. The purpose that was sitting inside of me my whole life. Okay, so this might sound a bit silly, but... Spirit looks around to see if there's anyone else on the beach. When she's convinced that it's only you two, she continues. There's a dragon that lives inside me. I've always known, but I've tried to ignore it. When I couldn't ignore it, I tried to push it down. I'm so stupid. What? You're not stupid. That sounds badass. <laughs> right? But I didn't let it out. And then I, you know, chop chop. And now that dragon is pretty much a one-track revenge beast. But enough about me. What's inside of you, stranger? Nothing but darkness, no dragon, just a lot of fire. What's she like? Mm. Hmm. I feel like fire would be like revenge or yeah, something. Maybe she'll like that. Here's your gut. No dragon, just fire. A raging inferno. In fact, begging to burn this whole place down if I let it out. Maybe I am the dragon? I'm sorry, but you're no dragon. And breathing fire, oh. that's some hobbit-type nonsense. I'm a descendant of proud samurai. Our dragons are on a whole other level. Looks like there was only room for one dragon inside spirit after all. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you, and then you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on the strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary. And attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute part points was not a part of this evening's activities. Bro. That's strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was... No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, 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 go! Sonic X. Once everyone has gathered at, <laughs> once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. You're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on time for evening activities, and we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Guess one, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we, how will we decide who? I bet I can guess. Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. S -s Sorry, everyone. I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works, and I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. In there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is the absolute dream come true? Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Darn it, Donald! Oh. If you flex, if you try to flex the authority <laughs> gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick, and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Us and Moss are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. Did we mess up? I don't know. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us! I renounce my
my name? Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. But we all gotta... But we still gotta get started on story time, so... Spongebob, who do you think should go? Ah, damn it, that's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Oh, good, we actually... I was like... I choose you! Spirit! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? You made some Pokemon trade. <laughs> really? You want to hear from me? Spirit huffs and dramatically rolls her eyes as she gets to her feet in front of the campfire. Let her talk you out of it. She's great with ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it, but she comes up with the scariest stuff. Seriously disturbing, even to me, and I literally pulled the guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Okay. Talk about bullcrap stories. If everyone else is going to chit-chat, I guess I can just sit down and... Huntress's eyes go red behind her mask and both Trapper and Wraith take their seat. They know when it's worth fighting and when it's not. <sighs> well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary. It's a romance. Too late now, though. I was selected, and so I'm going to tell my story. I call it... The Prisoner's Kiss! You notice that Huntress and Wraith are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Nobody offered you popcorn. I thought nobody was Dwight now. <laughs> It was a dark summer night. Warm rain seeped from the sky like blood from an old wound. Detective Hata, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence, unlike anything she'd ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen of their officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. But how could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box. Strange, alien in its appearance and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered? Built on site? In such a busy area, how could something like this just appear? A mystery, as if it was as if it was conjured by magic. But this was no illusion. The huge box was very real, and someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her story to look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Help me! cried someone inside the box. It was a man, terrified, trapped, imprisoned, his voice trembling. By now, it was as if every detective in the city was there, looking the strange structure up and down, inspecting it on every side. It didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid and much too heavy to move by hand. Solid, that is, except for a single small slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and I was here, and here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, De Detective Hata comforted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time for, other for the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity, only anxiety, as the night dragged on with no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man in inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. This kind of sounds like a scary story to me. Yeah. But Detective Hotto is no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her like it never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed Detective Hotta. You're not alone. I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together, and the we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking through that narrowest of passageways, Detective Hata watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of this strange, sad prisoner. 
Together, they both wept in silence at the hopelessness of the moment. Promise? asked the man. Promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge. She felt an instant connection like she never had felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any of the other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. And so, when the man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hada, for she knew he would return. And he did, pressing his lips up to the narrow slit in this horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, steam floating from his mouth as he asked, Promise? Promise that I'm not alone? Dot dot dot. Yes, she promised. I do. And pressing her palms against the cold outside of the box, without truly knowing why, Detective Hada leaned forward and placed her own lips up to the opening, letting her breath creep into the strange structure, allowing her warm lips to fall on this man's. It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel in this brief contact the beating of her heart, pulsing blood through every inch of her body, match beat for beat in this soft touch. Thank you, said the man, no trace of fear remaining in his voice and he backed away into the darkness, disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness. "'Get back!' yelled an officer, suddenly thrusting himself between Detective Hada and the box, breaking a silence that would soon be filled by a cacophony of warring gears and clicking latches, and symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once. Something had triggered, as if an unseen lever pulled, and the side of the giant box began to slide open." Detective Hada gripped her flashlight tightly and pushing forward into the foggy exterior of the giant box. Her feet splashed in the puddle of rainwater, her heart racing as she swept her light from side to side. And that's when her eyes landed on the man. Or at least, landed on what should have been him. There, in the corner of the box, was a pile of pieces, like parts of doll, almost pulled apart, or... Perhaps that's just how Detective Hada had to think of him in that moment to survive. A collection of segments, limbs, pieces, disconnected from one another, cleanly severed and placed in a neat little pile. And atop that pile, a head, cold, pale, eyes open, lips in icy blue. Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, her lips blue. Tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire or up at the sky, anywhere but at spirit. It was you who chose her. You had an, who, you who initiated this harrowing tale. So sad, so creepy, so sensual? Not really. She really went into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail, and now no one is sure to act. Dwight and Claudette are staring daggers at you. You have to do something. The, this game was supposed to be a lighthearted romp. Please. I said do something. Um, Say nothing. Oh. Hug her. Cool story. Stand up and try to start with those slow claps. Should we hug her? Uh, yeah, let, let's, hate... let's give her that comfort that she probably never got. Maybe. I don't think she'll like Cool Story. Yeah, I think that Cool Story will be bad. Cool Story, bruh. You stand, and without saying anything, approach Spirit, reaching your arms around her for a hug. Her robe, hovering the air, begins to wrap itself around you and squeeze you into her. It's kind of like being hugged back, but also like being tied up. It's certainly not what you expected. Instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward movement, and you nearly fall over into the fire. Spirit says nothing, and floats away with it, without so much as a goodbye. You meanwhile realize everyone had just watched this truly strange interaction from the corners of their eyes. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and sweat up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves, and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up. And he's blaring his latest song. Hey, baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. 
I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special... Oh, something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island, the only lobster in an ocean of sardines. He really mm wants us to do that secret ending. He does. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Sorry, we Bye. don't care about you. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Spirit approaches you. Yes. <laughs> you know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on you. This fog that follows me around. I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. You and I are... Both absolutely flabbergasted at that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day, even when you're a god I mean narrator. You're doing it again right now. You need to calm down. You should come to the hot tub with me. I don't think that'll cool you down, but okay. Or calm, whatever. Dipping in hot tubs with the spirit? You come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her. An offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Why do I get the feeling the ocean is a trickster stan? Yeah. 